In this orthokeratology case, we have a patient whose lenses are decentering nasally pretty markedly. Uh, the patient is seeing well, but we're going to see if there's some changes we can make to the lenses to get them to center a little bit better. Here's the lens that the patient is using for the right eye right now. And the first thing I would change is the overall diameter. I think on this cornea, we can go up to about 11.2. And And then we also have to readjust the OZ and IC when we change the diameter. Center thickness also changes. I don't remember where it was, but just reset it to its original parameter. And then the other thing I would consider doing is uh, increasing sagittal depth here on the nasal side of the lens and then decreasing the sag on the temporal side of the lens with the idea that the lens will hit a little bit sooner on the right side or on the nasal side and push the lens uh, temporally. So this change I'd make in 50% mode, and I would go for about a 10 micron change. So right now we're at 766, and I would make the new sag here 776. There's a funny kink in there right now, so let's give it one more click to smooth out the curve, and that will also give us a more accurate measurement in terms of differential for the sag. Yeah, put a little bit of a kink in there again. Okay, 776. And then on the opposite side, we'll go to a 746. And we've got a little irregularity to the graph here, so we'll give it one, maybe a second click. That's a little bit better. And go up a little bit more. Okay, and then we have a 10 micron differential here. And on a case like this, I would also add some prism into the lens. This will at least help us to know whether or not the lens is orienting what we expect. If this lens orients upside down, then we're going to get the opposite effect or maybe no effect of uh, the change. And so having, having the prism ballast and having the lab mark the ballast location will allow us to see the lens on the eye and then also allow possibly the patient to observe lens position when waking up in the morning. In addition, with a case like this, I think it's a good idea for the patient, if, if you end up changing lenses, to have the patient discontinue lens wear for two or three nights and let the cornea unmold a little bit. There's a lot of molding going on here, and it's possible that this super flat area will cause some unusual decentration of a different lens design. Um, and of course, I'll ask the patient as well if they have any unusual sleeping positions, if they wear a mask at night, an unusual pillow, anything that might be pushing this lens around through the eyelid in ways that we normally wouldn't expect. So those are my thoughts on this case. Hopefully it's helpful to you. Best luck.